This episode of The Travelling Epicurean was made possible by these sponsors. It's a secret. I'm here in Madison, Connecticut at my friend's pizza place, New Haven, our pizza and bakery. This is my good friend, Glenn. Hello, how you doing? And he's gonna share with us today his secret meatball recipe. I'm really excited about this because I love meatballs. And then we're gonna whip up a meatball pizza. I'm gonna take it home to Riley and Bella. They're gonna be so excited when I walk through the door with a pizza from Glenn. So, Glenn, do you want to show us what we're going to need to make these wonderful meatballs? Oh, most definitely. All right, so show us what you have here to make up these meatballs. Okay, this is 10 pounds of ground beef, 3 pounds of um, brisket, 3 pounds of um, short ribs, and um, 3 and a half to 4 pounds of ground beef, 80-20. Uh, Oh my goodness. Now, do you grind that all yourself? Yeah, that's all freshly ground. Yes, that's what we ground wow. that in-house. That's all freshly ground. That's and fantastic. Then I, um, this is five pounds of longini sweet sausage. Oh, wonderful. And I, I mix the sausage. And Longini's a local company, too, Yeah, right? Longini's out of New Haven. They've been there for over 100 years. Fantastic. So I grind, um, I mix this all in and kind of get this all mixed together. The, uh, the ground beef and a sausage. Now how many meatballs is this going to make? This is going to make uh, approximately about 39 uh, to 10 ounce cooked meatballs. Large meatballs? Yeah, when I start these out they're going to be probably about uh, about 11 to 12 ounces each. Okay. They're a little bigger than a, a baseball. Oh wow! Because Those you are know, huge. yeah, because we slice them, you know, for our pizzas. For so the we pizza. we want them big enough for that, and it's just uh, I just go by the size of my hand okay. to uh, to make them. Oh, this so is going to be so fun! I can't wait. So to I, I marry this these. all together like this, and then this is all um, bread that I uh, You're soaking this. I bread, soak right? this bread in heavy cream. Ooh, heavy cream! Yeah. I usually use milk, but I like the heavy. Yeah, cream. the heavy cream is nice. It it like kind of keeps it together, and it just keeps it uh, sturdy. So you're squeezing out some of the liquid there, right? Yeah, I squeezed, I squeezed the, the liquid out. Now how long did you have that soak? Just I so was soaking nice. this for maybe you know, 15 minutes. It's just enough to get it because the bread absorbs it. This is Italian bread that we yeah. cut into squares. Okay. And then... Um, like a, an Italian loaf of bread. Yeah, Italian loaf and whatever. And this is three pounds of bread. Three pounds so of bread. So it's 10 pounds of meat, five pounds of sausage, and three pounds of bread. Okay. That's the ratio that you need to uh, to make this this particular ratio. Obviously, in the restaurant, we this is only one third of what we normally make. So like, how many batches? I of do meatballs? about two batches a week. Two batches this size or two no, larger batches? Two large batches. I make about a about 300 to 350 meatballs a week. Oh my goodness, that's yeah, a lot of meatballs. Yeah, it's a good sell, and people buy them as a side dish um, with pasta. We have our we have our own fresh pasta in it. So now you're going to mix it all in, right? Yeah, I incorporate the bread, the meat, and the sausage together. Okay. Just uh, marry it together a little bit. Before. Now where did this recipe come from, Glenn? This is my mother's recipe. Oh, it is? Annette. Annette Frodo. So this is a family recipe. She was the nanny. A secret family recipe. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, this is it. what she did all the time. That was meatball day, every Sunday. That's so nice. Now I incorporate all my dry and some wet ingredients um, to my mixture, and then I mix it all again. All right, so now we're gonna be adding okay, in the so eggs. Okay, so now we're gonna, we're gonna add in uh, 10, that's 10 eggs, and then we're oh, gonna look put- look at all these goodies you have over here. This is all fresh uh, ground uh, chopped garlic. Ooh. This is about uh, 13 ounces, 13 ounces of garlic. Oh, that looks amazing. And then, um, this is uh, 16 ounces of uh, chopped uh, pepperoni. 
Okay. This is all ground Ooh. fine pepperoni. This is the real secret to the That's recipe. the secret to the recipe? Yeah, that's what helps have the spiciness. Yeah, that little bit of a and, kick. Yeah, and it's just, it's, yeah, so it's not just so meaty and they're not bready by no means. The pepperoni is what really is like the secret little ingredient to oh. it that you don't really see it in there, but you taste it. Yeah. And then I put uh, about 14 to 15 ounces of caramelized uh, red chopped onions. Yes. And then this is um, about uh, 15 to 16 ounces of freshly chopped parsley. Okay. We like a lot of parsley in our meatballs, a lot of green. And then we have about 10 to 12 ounces of fresh chopped basil. And then I put uh, one pound, 16 ounces of uh, imported Pecca Romano grated cheese. That looks beautiful. And Romano has a lot of flavor. I love yeah, Romano Yeah, it sure cheese. does. It's, it's not as salty as uh, Parmesan. Yeah. And then uh, this is another nice um, addition to the meatballs. This is a uh, regat, but it's a re it's called Rafina. <gasps> it's a regat that's um, a refined one more time, so there's less water, and that's what I use in all my Monte Gauts, oh, my, my uh, raviolis. Goodness. And uh, my eggplant rollatini oh, and my calzones. You're making me so hungry. It's, wow. um, it comes from Luzzi's cheese in New Haven. It's, I love Luzzi. I yeah. get my ricotta there too. Yeah, from they, my and this is the called Rafina. It's it's one step and it's really nice. And I put about uh, is this the one 17 with the, the plastic cover that's over that? Ricotta yeah, that yes, they have that's there? exactly it. That's yes, the one. Yes, I love that and one. And it's very uh, it's like pudding. It, there's not there you know there's not not much water in it at all. Ricotta so, pudding. So oh my God. Yeah, it's like, I'm in I call it custard. And then I put um, three and a half ounces of um, oregano. Okay. And then I put three and a half ounces of salt. Oh, beautiful. And then I put three and a half ounces of uh, black pepper. All right, so you just start mixing to incorporate everything, right? Yeah, you want to get everything mixed very I love how you do this by hand too. I think that's really important. Oh yeah, you need to feel it and see it. Yeah. And um, and just exactly. And that's the way you're not doing it, right? Oh yeah. yeah. She used to have a big bowl. Did she have you help? Make oh the yeah. Meatballs when oh you were yeah. A kid? We used to have to. We used to chop the bread, and then we used to take uh, turns mixing. Oh yeah. It was tiring. <laughs> yeah, it was tiring. Thank it made us those... more hungry. Yeah, I'm sure. It I think did. she was working us up for dinner. <laughs> You want to get it so that everything's incorporated. I could smell it from here. It oh, even yeah. smells The ingredients amazing. are all fresh, and that's the only way to do anything um, with any type of cooking is just fresh ingredients. Now, is do the you get your kids to help you roll these meatballs? Oh, yeah. In fact, should we get him over here to help us? We can. I think we need to. I was going to say, why don't you show Dylan and I? But, Dylan, I think you already know how to roll these meatballs, huh? Because you've been doing this with your dad. Of course. Yes, of course. All right. And I've rolled many a meatball, but let's see you and how you roll your gorgeous Oh, my goodness. That's a huge meatball. Yeah. Well, and now, what do you have behind there? A little bit of the yeah, milk I, from the, the, the bread? Yeah, this is the, the leftover milk from the, uh, the bread. That's actually the cream. It's heavy cream. Oh, heavy and that cream. helps, that helps uh, for the meatball to spin in your, in your hand. And it also gets the bread that much more moisture so the meatball will stay together nicely. Oh my goodness. See how it Look melts how it? That. And that's the size we want to get. <laughs> Look at that good. giant meatball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, now how long does it take to, to bake these? Well, we bake them for about uh, this is like 45 a meatball, minutes right? to an hour. I, I bake them till they're perfectly like crispy on the top. They're brown. All right. You know, and um, that, so I just okay? bake. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. And, uh, you know, I, I, as long as they're brown and crispy on the top. This is so much fun. Yeah. They're so much better to eat. Oh, nice my gosh. They're nice to make, gosh. but they're better when you Could eat. Could you imagine having a plate of spaghetti with this giant meatball? We get three you... to an order, so this is what you get. Three of these to an order. Are you kidding? Yeah, that's our order of side meatballs. Three they of serve this size meatball so with their like spaghetti and meatball order. It's probably almost a pound and a half of cooked meat. That's an amazing dish. Yeah, oh it really my is gosh. nice. It's definitely plentiful. You gotta order the spaghetti and meatballs. They smell so good. They smell. You need to embed cameras amazing. with it smell. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I keep saying that every time I do a show. I'm like, I wish you guys could smell this. Oh, it certainly is. <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. Oops, sorry, Dylan. I didn't mean to splatter so long. <laughs> Next time we gotta get your mom down here. Yeah, definitely.
When I first met her, she was making these amazing sheet pan pizzas. Remember that? Oh, yeah. They were so delicious. Did uh, she make were, those for you? Uh, no, they were. Those no, kind of, dad's uh, taking Dad them. does all the pizza <laughs> right here. Well, she loves sister. the bakes. So that would be her passion. We'll have to get like, her going. They make Italian cookies. Oh, really? Pastries, you know. Italian cookies are hard. They're all like, you know, homemade recipes from. Like your grandmother, yes. and your, you know, those, those Italian cookies. Homemade Italian cookies. We're going to have to get those recipes from you, too. Yeah, <laughs> I love this oven. And now, is this a convection oven? Yeah, this is a, a turbo convection a oven. turbo convection. Yeah, this gets Not really hot. Not just ordinary convection. Yeah, this gets up to about, uh, I mean, it'll go up to 600 degrees. But we really? cook them at 400, and it'll get uh, from a, a cold state to 400 degrees in about six or seven minutes. Wow. This is a beautiful oven. It has a water jacket in the back so you can oh my bake gosh. breads and cookies. Wow, look at you. Oh my gosh, those are so gorgeous. Really nice, Glenn. Oh my goodness. Look at that tray. That is amazing. They do come out really <laughs> They are so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Am I ready to eat one? I think that question goes without saying, doesn't yes. it? Look at this meatball. That looks amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, it's absolutely it so gorgeous. Great. I'm gonna have to get a close-up of what that looks like in the Let's middle. See what the inside looks like. Oh my goodness, look how gorgeous that is. It is one of the most flavorful, delicious meatballs I have ever had. Oh, it's out of this world. I can't wait for you guys to go make this recipe. I need one more bite. Mmm. Wow. Recipe, is this your? Yeah, this is just my recipe that I've just perfected over the years. Over the years, right? Of using. And, and basically, it's just a, a good basic recipe. But the, the, I found out over the 30 years I've been doing this that dough, dough needs to ferment. And, uh, and, and we don't For use that it. Texture we, yeah, and flavor, right? And you smell. You can smell it. Oh, we, I love if you just the smell dough, yeast. you can smell the yeast in it. We use all fresh yeast. And we, we won't even use this dough for a minimum of three yeah, days. Dough. You can stretch this dough. This is a 14 inch pie. So this dough will, it's, it, you know, will stretch pretty big. Okay, so this is San Marzano tomatoes. Yeah, San Marzano, right from San Marzano, Italy. Oh, fabulous. The finest tomatoes you could ever use. I recommend it. Use this quality of tomatoes with anything that now, you use. Now, is that a cooked sauce or those no, raw? No, no, these are just raw yeah, and they're and just ground. And I love ground. that flavor better for a pizza. I do the yeah. same thing. Yeah, they're, they're raw. I put some Pecorino Romano on it. Okay. Whole milk mozzarella and buffalo mozzarella. Okay. These are the ones we cut. All right, so we're Chop putting them up a little bit. A meatball pizza together here. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, you can see all the ingredients in it. You can see the pepperoni, the parsley. Oh my basil. Gosh. This is one of my favorite. We pizzas. cut these all by hand, too. Yeah. We cut our meatballs by hand. Really now it's nice. ready to go in the oven. This oven is about 550 degrees. This is a brick oven from Canada. Wow. Oh my gosh. I love Look at these that. Ovens. Yeah, this is a beautiful oven. It cooks so nice. You'll see the crispiness on this crust when it comes out. So you're taking that pizza out, Dylan? Yeah. Oh, look how amazing that looks. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to have a piece of that. That looks really pretty. You've done this before, haven't you, Dylan? Oh, <laughs> this definitely isn't my first time. Many times, right? That's why I would like to get a bigger plate somewhere. Look at that, it's sizzling. <laughs> that smells really good too, that's beautiful. Look at the crust on this pizza. Glenn, you make an incredible pizza. Unbelievable. New Haven, a pizza and bakery. Well, thank you so much for watching. Glenn, thank you for having me here and sharing your secret meatball recipe. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And those meatballs are to die for. I can't wait for you guys to go make these. You can find the recipe at thetravelingatpecurian.com. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you for coming.
Hi guys, Michelle here. Welcome back to the Traveling Epicurean. Today we're going to be in my kitchen and I'm going to share with you one of my very favorite recipes for New England clam chowder. It's creamy, bursting with clam flavor, lots of clams, potatoes, a little bit of smoky from the bacon. You're going to love this recipe and I also have a couple of secret ingredients. Come on over here and I'll show you what we're going to need to get this going. So this is what we're going to need to make our amazing New England clam chowder. I have Snow's clams. I love these clams. I've been using them for over 20 years. The quality is always the same. Absolutely delicious. We are going to use one large Vidalia onion, a sweet white onion that I grate. I also grate two stalks of celery. I have three slices of bacon that I finely diced. We have five medium Yukon potatoes because they're nice and creamy and a medium starch. We have some rosemary. I have five bottles of clam broth. This broth is from the six cans of clams that I opened and that's how beautiful they are right there. I have some cream sherry right here and we're going to need butter and of course a little bit of Tabasco and some oyster crackers. And last but not least, the heavy whipping cream. We're gonna use three cups of that. Look how gorgeous these canned clams are. They're absolutely beautiful. So I did chopped clams and then I did one minced. This is a minced and look how beautiful those are as well. So this is what it looks like when I open the can and then I just pour out the juice just like that because we don't want to put the clams in right away. We want to put them in at the last possible moment. Just like that. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's see how that bacon's doing. So I'm going to put in all of the chopped bacon. You know, I really don't want this to be too crispy. I just want it to be golden. And, um, and then we're going to add in our onions and our celery, and we're going to glaze a little bit with some dry cream sherry. Um, I love sherry and chowder. That's pretty much my main secret ingredient. It makes the most amazing flavor. So I have this on a low heat and we're just gonna get this golden. All right, look at that. That's coming along really nicely. You see, there's not a lot of bacon fat rendered out of this. I use a good bacon. And, you know, I don't want this chowder to be about bacon fat. Um, just a little bit. I'm going to even add a little piece of butter in here to bring this along. It smells so delicious. It's just that hint of smoke. Now I'm going to add in the onions and the celery. Get the celery in there. And now I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. And that bacon is going to kind of melt right into the chowder. It's going to be a really subtle, wonderful flavor. It smells incredible already. All right, let's turn up the heat a little bit and get this going. Now two more tablespoons of butter to keep those vegetables soft. And all these vegetables are just going to melt into the chowder and make wonderful, wonderful base flavor. Well, that's looking really nice. I have it on a medium low once it got started sauteing because I really don't want too much caramelization on those vegetables because I really want them to melt into the chowder. I look at this like my, um, my crab cakes that I make. No nonsense, no fillers. I don't want corn in here, peppers, carrots. I just want potatoes and clams. And then we're gonna add some rosemary, which we're gonna tie off. Okay. I just want, again, another layer of flavor from the rosemary, and it's very subtle, and it's absolutely delicious. Wait till you see how nice that's gonna be. I like the Yukon, though, because it's a medium starch, and it holds its shape. I find that the russets really just melt away into the soup, and then you have no potatoes left. So this is a nice potato to use, and it's pretty, too. So we have all the potatoes all done. You want them about the same size. This way they cook evenly. 
And uh, our next step, I like to take a quarter cup of the sherry that we're going to glaze the vegetables with, and I swish it around in the clams, and then I throw each one out as I as I swish the sherry around because there's a lot of flavor in the bottom of that can. So we don't want to waste all that clam broth. This is a great go-to recipe and you can make this anytime you want. I always have canned clams in my cabinet for linguine clam sauce or a chowder like this. So now I have a little bit of concentration of that clam broth in here with the sherry and I'm going to deglaze these vegetables. All right, oh my goodness, that smells amazing. Oh, it smells incredible. So now I'm going to add all the potatoes and I'm going to add the clam broth from the cans and all the clam broth from all the five bottles that we had as well. Make sure you shake it because there's a lot of flavor, a little bit of sediment that, that uh, falls to the bottom. So you want to make sure to get all that delicious flavor. And then we're going to bring this to a simmer and we're going to simmer it until those potatoes are tender and then we'll add the cream. I can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. You're really going to love it. And I have these special bay leaves that my mother gave me, and I'm gonna put those in there, just two. And bay leaves really do something for clam chowder. So that's all we need there. Let's bundle up this rosemary with some string here. I like my chowder very basic, but with tons of flavor, and that's what this New England clam chowder recipe is. It's packed with flavor. I think I had my favorite um, chowder. It was a, a cohog chowder up at the Cape. Oh my gosh. The look of it was very simple, not a lot of greens, but the flavor was just bursting. So that's kind of like I try and emulate that soup, you know, when you have a favorite and you come home and you try and, and match something that you had when you're out. All right, so here's our bundle. I'm even gonna take off that top because I don't want those leaves falling into the chowder. And we'll put that in a couple of minutes along with this, this sherry. So in one of my last shows, um, it's called Amontillado Sherry. It's a Spanish dry sherry. Chef Mark made that with his layered uh, torta de pollo. Oh my goodness, it was really amazing. And so that's what I'm keeping in my cabinet now. And we're gonna flavor our chowder with that sherry. I'm gonna add a half a cup more of that sherry. I really love that sherry flavor. And the alcohol is gonna burn off a little bit and then I'm gonna put in the rosemary. That's gonna be really, really nice. I love that flavor of that sherry. In fact, so if you have this just for adults, you can add a little splash of the sherry at the end after you've added the cream and the clams. What this is here is the chowder base. And it's best actually if you make this the day before, um, you're going to see me add all the ingredients eventually, and then um, I'm going to cool it, and then I'm going to put it into the refrigerator, and I'm taking it to a neighborhood party tomorrow, and that's when it's going to be the best, when I reheat it. Not going to bring it back up to a boil, though, ever, because the cream will break and the clams will get tough. We're just going to warm it through, and it's going to be really delicious. I can't wait to bring it to the party tomorrow. And the rosemary is being infused into that stock, that base. And then I took out a potato just to show you. See, it's really, I'd say, hmm, almost ready. So I'm gonna turn it way low. I'm gonna add the cream in there. I'm gonna add three cups of cream. And then I'm gonna bring that back up again. And I like the cream to actually simmer in there a little bit because that's gonna get a little bit thick. I don't add any roux to my, my chowder. All right, so we're gonna add this lovely heavy cream. Now when you go to warm it through the next day, make sure you take out this before you warm it through. 
because that rosemary bundle is really all the leaves are going to start falling off of it and take out the um the bay leaves as well that looks really nice though okay so my other secret ingredient is one draw flour this is amazing it is a quick dissolving flour i'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on the chowder just like that and then i'm just going to stir like this you don't need to do any roux in the beginning and this thickens it just enough and it's not even pasty and then i can keep simmering just for like maybe one or two more minutes and that's it is that beautiful you can use that one draw for anything at any point in time when you're making soup or gravy or stew you just sprinkle it on and it immediately dissolves into your sauce i'm going to take it off the heat though immediately otherwise those potatoes are going to disappear so it looks amazing i did add one more teaspoon of that pink himalayan salt i'm not even putting the clams in the soup when it's on the heat. I don't want these clams to cook. They're already cooked. So we're gonna add them now. Wow, so look at this chowder. Isn't this beautiful? Really nice. The potatoes are still intact. I didn't totally kill them by heating them away. I don't wanna stir it too much because those rosemary leaves will start falling off of that stalk there. But um, I just wanted to show you how pretty this is. I love some broth that's really delicious. So I'm going to make a plate here of this chowder. Wow, that's so yummy. I have my Tabasco because I do love Tabasco in my chowder. I'm a big Sriracha fan, but there's something about Tabasco and chowder. It just goes together so well. Here we go. Try this. Oh my goodness. That's really, really good. You're gonna love this incredible chowder. And if you wait it till tomorrow, the flavors become even more intense and, um, and it just gets better and better. And then of course it won't be there on the third day because you're gonna eat it all tomorrow anyways. <laughs> and the best thing about this chowder is you can make it all year round. I can't wait for you to go try this, remember? You can find it at thetravelingepicurean.com. Have a really great day. Ciao! All those other ingredients to be the underlying flavors that are going to fill this bursting something or other. <laughs> and uh, this is the soup that I have. <laughs>